Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, um, well, okay. So first of all, um, the study was funded by the European Commission, and that is a disclosure I am obliged to make. So um, very often I'm asked the questions: Why we are doing that? Why, as a busy people, we are evaluating uh, risk in radiotherapy? But we have to encounter that during decades, uh, like in other disciplines, there has been certain developments. So nowadays the radiotherapy is very complicated. And we have to take certain precautions. So the usual question is, uh, uh, aren't we too busy to, um, uh, to perform a risk analysis? Or uh, we can also say that the accidents in radiotherapy are extremely rare and why the other disciplines do not perform this risk management. So the answer is twofold. Uh, first of all, we have to, because this is mandatory, this is law. And in many countries, uh, they started, uh, in fact, to do that. Even if you haven't started it yet, it's, it's behind your door. It's knocking to, to the door. And you, soon, sooner or left, later, you will have to start perform it. Uh, of course, there is another also answer. The public opinion is very sensitive to all radiotherapy events. Uh, I, I hate to say accidents. Uh, there are other events that are much smaller. But everybody do not pay so much attention to, to events in, in chemotherapy like in radiotherapy. Uh, so uh, the second answer is uh, we are not talking about accidents, in fact, which are re very rare. We are talking about that regularly happens and we sometimes do not want to admit it underdose, overdose, or ge geographical misses. Uh, I made this picture in Helsinki Museum in, um, in radiotherapy devices, so w what we are talking about. Of course, this is not the case. This is not unwanted event. It was done by design. Such uh, devices were present in many shops in the 50s to just to, to, to check if uh, uh, food uh, fit well to, to the shoe. Uh, so, talking about risk, what is risk? We have to differentiate certain, certain, um, certain elements. It first of all, is uh, risk assessment. It's before. Then is analysis of event, which is after something happened. There is, of course, very important and very well-known uh, reporting and learning, and also a classification. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, and have been a lot of ongoing in the European Union about uh, different projects on, on risk assessment. So I put in this uh, slide uh, uh, a development from 2011. Uh, the important to mention is that in 2013 a new European directive uh, came into force uh, about the basic safety standards. And uh, in fact uh, all these, uh, our recommendations that we prepared in a group of people uh, had to be modified because uh, the project started before this directive uh, came into force. Now we have some uh, intermediate phase of, uh, of um, adopting it to the new situation. Uh, shortly about the agenda of, of the presentation. So situation before, before the project. Uh, as I already mentioned, public opinion was extremely sensitive. There were some um, accident uh, that happened in, in Europe and also United States in, in radiotherapy that trigger public opinion. And uh, therefore, since, uh, since some years, uh, all uh, EU, EU members are obliged to perform and implement methods uh, about risk analysis. Uh, used to be, the only directive used to be from 97. Now it has been amended by a new directive from 2013, as I've already mentioned, so there is a new regulation in force. Uh, therefore, in 2011, the European Commission announced a project to help the countries to implement methods uh, to prevent unintended exposure in radiotherapy and publish a call that we as a consortium won. Uh, the project was named Guidelines on the Risk Analysis of Accidental and Unintended Ex Exposures in Radiotherapy. The consortium who won the project was uh, led by European Society of Radiation Oncology, uh, there are few more institutions involved that formed this consortium and, uh, uh, and work together. Uh, I was the chair for the, uh, for the project. Uh, ESTRO was represented by two radiation oncologists, Marco Krengli and Philippe Mignon. Uh, we also had a representative from European Commission who served as a liaison 
liaison person from, uh, from authorities. Uh, we also had a panel of ex international experts, so you have them listed here. Uh, the main objective was, first of all, analyze the situation in European countries, uh, because the Europe, uh, European countries are very diverse uh, in radiotherapy, both practice and regulation, then to draw this picture and show to the public, and then to prepare recommendation. But the, the most important, uh, I would say, additional but most important objective was to obtain consensus between experts from all over organizations and countries. As you know, in each country people are doing things a little differently, and I'm not keen to, to, to adopt um, or implement changes. First of all, we, I did not mention it, but we differ in languages in, in European countries, so sometimes things are named differently and cannot be translated easily from one language to another. Uh, when we are talking about risk, it's radiation risk, so as I mentioned before, it's overdose or underdose or geographical miss, but very importantly, which is not included, the side effects. Uh, there is some, uh, there are some, sometimes people mistake uh, uh, names for, for these effects. By side effects, we understand all effects of in radio, events in radiotherapy, which are not associated with error. So meaning radiation risk means we made an error. Methodology. We, we used two questionnaires. First was general questionnaire sent to all, all over the Europe and some around con countries around. And the second was a uh, detailed questionnaire sent uh, to limited number of countries who decided to collaborate further. So this is how uh, uh, the second questionnaire was filled up. Uh, ten countries decided to, to provide more detailed data. Uh, of course, the problem is when you are sending out the questionnaire, it's the answer depends on who, who made an answer. So we decided to uh, provide uh, uh, more contact points uh, in, uh, than just one in a country. Uh, we asked uh, radiation oncologists, uh, clinical physicists, but we had also asked uh, uh, representatives of uh, national authorities like radiation protection and re regulatory authorities. Uh, unfortunately, the answer differs uh, depending who answer, and that's reality. Uh, we also studied literature, scientific publications, and to review national standards which was quite difficult because, as I mentioned, these national standards are written in national languages, which is not easy to, to, to follow sometimes. Uh, uh, finally, we organized European workshop to obtain consensus. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, in 2014, European Commission, uh, after one year of, uh, um, of discussion, approved the results. So now on a European Commission website are two documents visible. We also uh, published uh, data in, a, in radiotherapy and oncology journal. Two more papers are coming. Um, so about the results, uh, about statistic of replies, uh, out of 38 countries, 25 submitted questionnaire. Uh, six more started, but we do not accept the responses because the questionnaire was not completed. So basically we had a good representation of all data. Mm, legal basis. Uh, this is important. It, it depends. It, it's quite an interesting slide because it depends on the situation and tradition of each country. If you look uh, how it's organized, basic, uh, in basically 62% have of all countries have regulation. Uh, but there are some countries who have law, meaning uh, passed by the parliament. There are other countries uh, who do not have law but follow certain recommendation by authorities, which is not mandatory, but somehow enforce it on a lower level. Some, some countries follow guidelines done by uh, scientific societies. It depends on the tradition. For example, uh, in the UK or Finland, they follow guidelines. They do not have regulation. In Germany, they have a lot of uh, regulation. That, that depends on the uh, position of a country in history and tradition and other things. Um, as you can see, there are differences in these regulations. There are different acts of law in the countries. I'm, I'm not be concentrating too much on this particular slide. 
So this is how it's done in, 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 in some countries. So it, it's not very relevant, but I'm just willing to show that wh where to search for it if you need. There are general regulations, there are detailed regulations, many acts of law, and many guidelines are present in, in, in all countries. So it's really difficult to search through and get a certain common view on the situation. Uh, I intentionally made this slide here, just because to show you that the methods of risk assessments are far from your clinical daily routine and, and, and also mine. We cannot do it ourselves. This is uh, most important to say that uh, unless you are a trained person in, in risk analysis, you cannot perform it. You need uh, a specialist to do that. Don't think you, you can uh, the, assign this job to one of your colleagues. It, it's quite uh, complex. It requires uh, specific methodology. It's like in aviation. They needed to hire certain people to do that. Otherwise, you fail. And this will be boring for clinical people. There are many, ma many methods. Uh, just to, to show the, the results and acknowledge uh, my, my colleagues who, co who co-worked for this uh, study, is Marc Valero from, uh, from um, France, who evaluated the responses. So this is what is, now two more slides, what is in use. So as you see in five, five chosen countries here, there are different methods in use, and they did it. They did it, and they do that. Uh, as for routine. We were sometimes surprised to see how, how it's done in many, in many, especially West European countries. Reporting and learning seems to be the most known methods because it's more, you know, risk assessment is before something happened. We are not used to do that. They used to do it in aviation and transport and in industry. We, in medicine, we are not used to make a risk assessment before something happens. We don't have this tradition, but we have to start to do that. So even reporting and learning is after something happened, and after it's happened, we are more or less convinced we should report it. Of course, we have to report serious and rare incidents, and we have to report light but frequent incidents. Uh, some more slides. Uh, These are how the situation is done in European countries. So green color says yes, it's done. And you will be seeing in the next slides how it's done or whether it's done. So I, I will not stop slide by slide. So different things are done in some countries. In some, they are not. Some countries, they are blank. Simply did not, did not respond sometimes. So existing uh, reporting and learning systems, they are international or national. Uh, well, there are a few, uh, a few elements that I should mention. Sometimes the system is anonymous or sometimes it's confidential. Of course, uh, people are afraid of uh, submitting uh, information. So when the system is anonymous, it's easier to get information. However, it has a drawback because when something happened, you don't know who reported it, and you cannot uh, follow the, the, the line of the event. So it, but th 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 you have to balance between. There are different systems in use. Voluntary or mandatory is a question whether you like to, to report or you have to report. Uh, most of the systems are voluntary. You are not obliged to report unless something died, someone died. Uh, a public information, there are different traditions. In some countries, they disclose everything. Every small incident that happens, they disclose. It is a good example in France. They have law saying that on third day, you have to report to a to, to, to certain agent, national agency, and uh, soon after, it's, re it's open to all public. So everybody can access and make his own judgment what happened. In most of the countries, uh, there are summaries uh, uh, available and it's not uh, open to the public. Uh, we sometimes assume that the public opinion is not, has no in a, uh, competent knowledge to judge. But you know, it, it's, a, it's a question to, to approach. Methods of data entry, of course, it's uh, the electronic and the website uh, methods are growing and growing. Uh, no blame poli policy, it's, it's interesting. In, in Denmark, they, they passed the law that uh, uh, a person who, a person who uh, provides data cannot be blamed. 
cannot be punished? It's a good question because we all are responsible for what we did. It's not just that we report and we are not responsible. So this is how to balance. But if we be punishing uh, a reporter, we would not have a report. So it's, it's delicate. Ma it's delicate matter. If you look uh, how it's uh, conduct, how it has been conducted in, in some chosen European institutes. So you can see on the first row there has been in one institution 5,000 reports in three years, while we had uh, in the third, third row seven in two years. So, you know, in, in one institution, people are, are, are reporting like hell. Every, everything that happens there is reporting twice, three times a day. And in other, they don't report. So how to, how to manage it to do it uh, proper? We can't say if there is no report, it's better. Of course, uh, the main problem is classification. Now we come that uh, we have reports and we have to classif classify it to certain scales. And the main problem is that th there is too many classification systems, so we cannot compare situation between countries. And if you look for scales that has been detected, so we have scales with seven levels and we have scales with two levels. How to, how to compare incidents that happens between countries? And, we, we, and when we publish something, we want to be sure that the people in another country understand it, how to make European regulation, then there is so much diversity. So the problem, the real problem is severity scales and how to, how to overcome this problem. Uh, so another uh, group of slides, uh, 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 green means yes and red means no, so just have imagination. Uh, finally, European consensus between experts. So in 2012, uh, there was a European workshop and we tried to obtain consensus before the guidelines is published. This is a mandatory step before European Union gets and absorbs any material. So we had a, a, a tough discussion and, and some kind of a consensus was achieved. Of course, it's not mandatory. This European regulation, it's not European regulation, it's European recommendation, meaning countries do not need to follow However, they have to explain why they follow if they decide to not. Uh, okay, I, I'm sorry. Oh, it's, it's a recommendation. The recommendation is set in two documents. Uh, the preliminary data were published in Radiotherapy and Oncology in 2014. Two more papers are coming with detailed recommendation. However, the, uh, the concept and the data are already available on a European Union website. Uh, two documents. With, with some recommendations. Of course, it's not uh, time to, uh, to, to describe it in detail, but just to, I wanted to show that uh, these are recommendations to national authorities, to radiotherapy institutions. Maybe interesting, this interesting slide saying what is needed. As I mentioned before, you cannot do it yourself. You need to hire people to do that, and this task requires significant um, effort and also money. Uh, importantly, recommendation on terminology. Uh, we should not use the term of accident. It has a poor connotation, especially in nuclear industry. We should, uh, uh, we should use adverse error event, which is much better. It's invented terminology. So adverse error event, meaning adverse event is any type of adverse event, even uh, associated with patient individual sensitivity. Adverse error event means it has something to do with an error that we, we made a mistake. Finally, the last slide, a conclusion. The situation is diverse in, in Europe. Proactive risk assessment in many countries has not been implemented yet, so before something happened. Reporting and learning system has been quite well implemented, and, uh, but sometimes has not started. Uh, for the future action, action, we should promote the term of adverse error event instead of accident. Strong collaboration is needed between scientific societies to, uh, to promote this uh, concept. The classification is the most important to harmonize all scales in order to be able to compare results. And finally, I want to acknowledge our working team from all countries. Thank you.